welcome to the No Limits Podcast with your host, E. Willie. All right, we're back. No Limits with E. Willie. We got Evan Showman, the great artist that does a lot of MMA wrestlers and pop figures. Uh, I believe with pencil style. Um, welcome to the podcast, Evan. For having me. Oh, man, it's cool to have you. I've been a fan of yours for a long time, uh, since MySpace days. <laughs> <laughs> Best days, man. I miss them, honestly. Yeah, I do too, man. It was a simpler life back then. It, just, it was just a good time, especially in MMA. Like, everyone was making money. Yeah, the sponsors were there too. Yeah, everything changed when when the whole when Reebok was introduced and basically every company just vanished. You know. Yeah. Kind of a bummer, but this is the where banners, we're... all that, all that good stuff. Yes, I I work with Mike Swick, and he will be thrilled to tell you that he had the first sponsor banner ever. <laughs> he <Yeah>. loves. <laughs> <laughs> I remember hearing him say that on his podcast uh, real quick with Mike Swick. Um, yes. That was, um, that was a cool fact. I didn't know that. I didn't remember that at all. Had, was, he had Dana on his show, and Dana was like, congratulations, you, you were part of the biggest <laughs> of anything that ever <laughs> you uh, You broke up a little bit on that. Say that one more time. Dana White said what? Dana White told Swick, he's like, congratulations, you've been part of, like, the biggest pain in my ass, you know, during. during. Yeah. yeah, Dana White was never a fan of the banners, that's for sure. Yeah, because they just they, they draped them down and then nobody could see anything. Yeah. Uh, I, I I thought it was great. We, we used to have an idea that it would have been good if we had, like, a, uh, like, ticker, like a sports ticker thing. Mm-hmm. After you win, it just goes along the bottom saying so-and-so would like to thank their sponsors, blah, 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 you know? That way, it wouldn't distract from the interview when they're like, oh, wait, 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 one more second. Let me, let me thank this person and that person. You know, let me thank yeah, that's, Jesus. <laughs> that's a good idea to have that set up ahead of time, and it just goes off when I really win. Yeah. but it's pretty clever. It's just Reebok now, so I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, that deal is supposed to be up soon, isn't it? I thought that was supposed to end about a year ago. It's sometime soon. I know that, but what I'm curious to see is what they're going to go with. What, what what they're going to go with? Because there's no way they're going back to just regular regular sponsors like Condom Depot's not going to be back out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those days are over, unfortunately. That's one thing I like about Bellator when I when I had Tap Out Radio when I was Tap Out Radio um, when we had Scott Coker on he's like no we're never we're never gonna do that we're never gonna have just Reebok you know we want fighters to get the most that they can and, and you know he's doing that yeah scott Co- Scott Coker seems like a really cool guy to work for he's got a good head on his shoulders and he seems very loyal to what he says dude nothing never wavers well like take a look at like his track record he was with strike force right and almost everybody that was with strike force just followed him over to Bellator once he went over there because mm-hmm. I think he had like eight flaws for like two years or something like that and, and, um and then he took over Bellator after they booted Bjorn Rebney and just everybody started going over there. And you know, people, people give Bellator like a hard time, but dude, they pay their fighters. Yeah. Uh, it's just a lot of people see the numbers and they're like, Oh my God, these guys are nothing. Well, that's like the local level guys fight on Bellator cards. You know, like they have like, Say they're, they're here in San Diego. They have something at Benga. They'll have like 20 fights on the card. Now, the main card guys are getting paid, like really paid. Mm-hmm. But there'll be some fight on the Indian reservation out here all the time. And there'll be like a, a whatever, the first or second fight starting when it's still bright outside and and yeah, they're only making like a thousand to show, a thousand to win. They they have to sell their own 
um, tickets, you know, just like any smaller promotion would do. And so a lot of people give Bellator a hard time about that, but I'm like, you know what? You could not be fighting in Bellator doing the same thing. Right. So it's, it's a great platform, I think, for people. But those top guys, oh, my God, they're making so much money. There's, like, I would remember I was with Josh Thompson before his last fight in the UFC, before he uh, fought Tony Ferguson. It was actually here in San Diego. It was, it was actually the last time UFC was here, which was four years ago or something like that. And Josh just straight up said, he's like, this is my last UFC fight. It doesn't matter how much they throw at me. I'm, I'm going to Bellator. Davis <laughs> yeah. is getting so much money right now. So I'm, I'm just going to follow suit. And look what they did. They gave Josh a job. And now he's an analyst. And he's the post-fight interviewer. I mean, they're doing good things. But people people just want to hate on him. Yeah. Yeah, Josh is doing good. He's got a podcast out, I believe, too, with uh, Big John McCarthy. I can't remember the name of it. Do you know that yeah. one? Like, uh, in – yeah. If I heard it, I would know, but I can't think of it. <laughs> Thing. I can't, I can't. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> Josh. So, yeah, I, I really think uh, Bellator, just any other, another big league is very important for any other dominant league like the UFC, uh, WWF back in the day was best when WCW was thriving. All, all right. these, all these companies need a counterpart. So you have a negotiation for the athletes and you just have more competitive, everything, yeah. ener the energy is just better. I don't follow right. wrestling anymore, but, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it seems uh, it doesn't seem anywhere near as good as it was back in the Attitude Era and early 2000s. Yeah, I mean that was it was on a different level because I mean look at UFC when Pride like do you know how good Pride made the UFC just by being like the whole thing with the with Pride was that people went to Pride because they couldn't fight in the UFC anymore. You know that it was banned, mm -hmm. so they went. And they had all the best fighters. Dana and the Fertitas took over the UFC, and they started building the organization. And then it became – I mean, do you remember the forums back in, like, <laughs> 2005 or – people would be like, no way, Vanderlei Silva could never beat Tito Ortiz. You know, like, he beat him once in the UFC, and he would do the same thing again. And, and there's no way that Chuck Liddell could be – you know, Shogun, because at that time it hadn't happened. I mean, that was – it's healthy to have that kind of competition, that, that whole what-if thing, you know? Definitely. It plays a huge factor in, in everything. And the, the athletes definitely do better and have an, they have more negotiating rights in that situation too. But the UFC well, being on top of everything, they don't – they can't really – Have a monopoly on the business. I mean, mm -hmm. saying they don't, they do. I mean – are the most popular brand they don't pay the most uh, of all the organizations i know bellator's got endless money one fc's got a lot of money um I, you know it, i don't know it's just strange time watching these guys complaining about money right now because they're making so much money like yeah. <laughs> like rich franklin when he fought for the title was making like dicks and six or something ridiculous like that, like, and it was big money. It's or it seemed like big money, and that wasn't that long ago. Right. You yeah, know? it sucks so. that those guys that all, that got the sport so big. Those those are the guys that were on top of the world when I got into it. I got into it in like 2004, pretty heavy, and I've been yeah. addicted since. I haven't. Uh, I rarely ever miss a fight card, and uh, that's a lot of fights from now to. I mean, from 2004 to now. And, oh yeah. Um, it's it sucks that a lot of these guys that were like pioneers, Matt Hughes, uh, Franklin, Liddell, Couture, all these guys that did all these crazy fights and put on some hell of a wars, didn't get paid that great. And the best they get out of it is they're in the Hall of Fame of the UFC, <laughs> which doesn't go too far. Yeah, Especially I mean, when you spit on like Couture on a regular basis. Right. Yeah, it's. I mean, I guess that's the thing with pioneers. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. they're the. the they're always going to kind of get the shaft. Yeah, that's a good point. It's pretty but, much uh, that, that case with everything. Way, but I mean, I, I mean, I don't know how much money he's asking for, but 
I know he's making a lot of money right now. Who's I mean, that? Which fighter did you say it uh, cut out on you? Sorry, John Jones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would love to know the actual figure that he asked for that got Dana White all up in an uproar. <laughs> well, I mean, I somehow I understand. I Do you remember when John Jones was fighting for the title and the first few times he defended his, his title? Like, he was... He was killing people. And definitely. I mean, he he broke Brandon Vera's face. And Brandon Vera is a monster. He Machida looked dead when John Jones was done with him. Yeah. Uh, Smack Vitor around. Beat Rashad. Beat Cormier. It's like it's just easy for him. And now people are kind of giving John Jones a hard time. Like Oh, you lost this fight, which I do think he lost the last fight against um, Dominic uh, Dominic Reyes, and I think that he also I don't know it was it was pretty close his fight with um, uh, Santos and as well as Gustafson. Like he's got a couple of favorable favorable decisions going his way, but I don't think he's willing to get up for those fights. He's He's saying, if I go to heavyweight and I'm going to fight Francis Ngannou, who's this absolute wrecking machine, he's saying I want to get paid more. And should get paid more. Yeah, that's a huge fight, and it would do really well. So you know they're going to make the money. They might as well just cut him a little bit of a, a boost in it and um, let him get paid too because that's a huge career risk for him, man. If he gets caught like Alistair Overeem did, <laughs> being a lighter guy, he could take his head off. Uh, okay, you said you. I've seen every UFC fight ever. ever. I I used to watch them from like one till like sixteen, and I did oh, wow. sixteen to thirty-five. But have you ever? To me, the the gnarliest knockout punch I've ever seen was Ngannou's uppercut on Alistair Overeem. Yeah, it was another dimension that he got knocked into. Can you think of any other, any other fight where it was just so, I mean, the latest one, Garbrandt's on a sunset was amazing. Um, basically where the guy holds the B button down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Up, oh, let's go and wham. Like, Ngannou's have to be. That's the hardest punch I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, Cody Garbrandt's punch had a little bit of a curve to the more of a hook, a low hook from the waist side. But uh, Ngannou's was just like a straight uppercut from hell, like a Mortal Kombat uppercut. <laughs> it was just vicious. Overeem's neck bent the way – not – the human neck is not supposed to go like that, you know? Yeah. He was his own ass. Like, what? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that happening to John Jones being a lighter guy? Yeah, I mean, insane. Honestly, I think that fight would be not the greatest because I think Jones would wrestle him. Yeah. Like, and I think he'd have a lot of success. I think he'd wear Nganu down. I don't think he's going to stand there and raid with him because who really can? Right. But I don't know, man. I, it, these next few months will be interesting to see what happens as far as. Who's fighting? We know we know Conor McGregor's not done. Right. This is the third time he said he's bowing out of MMA, and I think, honestly, if you look, at the tweets are almost exactly the same. It's mm -hmm. been, like, yeah, well, this is it. It's been fun. <laughs> the next one, well, it's been fun. Um, I there are guys that he doesn't want to fight. Uh, like he's saying he wants to fight Khabib, he doesn't want to fight Khabib. Yeah, that fight you know, with as good as Connor is with his striking and his jujitsu is improving, that fight will never change the outcome. Uh, Habib is just leaps and bounds ahead of him when it comes to ground and pound and takedowns, and it's going to yeah. be the same outcome whether it's drug on later into rounds. It's still going to be the same thing, unfortunately, for Connor. Habib well, is what, a nightmare opponent for him. What I have heard from my friends at AKA is that. When Khabib gets a hold of you, 
no matter what weight class you're at. He's he's putting you down, he's keeping you down. I mean, think of this. Anybody he's ever gotten to the ground, no one's really been able to get out of it. Like he's his his tough control is ridiculous for a lightweight. Um yeah. That's why I thought the Ferguson fight was always going to be a, a decent fight because he's so he never stops once he's on his back. You know, it would be a different fight than, like, Ferguson and Gates he was. But I think that Ferguson and Khabib, you'd be crazy. It would be some great grappling at that point, you know? Yeah. But Connor doesn't want any part of – doesn't want any part of Khabib. Any more than Dennis wants a part of Khabib. Oh, God. <laughs> that flying kick off the octagon should have been enough for him to keep going. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, I know he's trying to get fans, but I just don't. He, he says, says some silly oh, shit. Yeah. Have you drawn that yet, the Habib flying off the octagon situation? No, uh, I, was, I was going to, but then I just decided to put an eagle behind Khabib instead of him being the eagle. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome that he turned into an eagle. It's, he, he completely uh, fitted his nickname with that situation. Yeah, who the hell, who jumps off a cage like that? Lifting their knees to their chest like he was, like a WWE finishing move that he was doing. Yeah, like he just wanted to stomp his head into the ground from up above. <laughs> I don't blame him. Yeah. Every I am Dennis opens his mouth. I mean, you know, I'm the undisputed champion. I'm I, I just I, I'm not a fan of the Colby Covington and Dylan Dennis. I mean, I, I t- shit talking is one thing, but unrealistic shit talking. I, come on. The I, only uh, the only time unrealistic shit talking worked for me was when Chael Sonnen did it because he had a a good a good wit about him when he would do it. <laughs> Well, you believe it, it was corny, and but it, it worked for him. I mean, he was not supposed to beat Anderson Silva, and he it whooped Anderson Silva's ass for four and a half rounds, four minutes until he got stupid. But Chael Sonnen, he he's he's fought that way in his life. Like I I don't understand. Like when he fought Paulo Filo, he was whooping Filo's ass on the feet, and then he just kept going for takedowns. And I'm like, really, dude. Yeah, like you're smashing this guy, and this guy's a Brazilian black, as it turns out. Whatever, Chael won, and blah blah blah. But I don't know how his fight IQ is, but it, it is dude can fight, you know. So it's not like it was what he said was unwarranted. It, it was the afterwards mm-hmm. stuff. Like, he's never lost. I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't really, Undefeated. I don't, <laughs> It is what it is, but Colby's is his. It's so bad. Like, I don't. I think people might like him just because of how cringy it is. Yeah. This is. Uh, I wanted to put this up here. This is such an amazing. This is one of your earlier Anderson Silva ones, huh? Get out of the way. Yeah. It's so damn good, man. That's incredible. I'm an artist too, but when you put our work together, it looks like I'm a, a child that draws. <laughs> hey, we all we all start somewhere. It's just so damn good, man. That uh, thank you. That uh, that picture has history behind it, where uh, Silva actually told me I couldn't sell those. Well, actually, Ed Suarez told me I couldn't sell those. For through Anderson Silva, and the next thing I know, if you see the movie, I think it's like Water, is a little documentary or whatever. Uh-huh. The first 15 minutes of the movie, they walk up the stairs of Anderson's house and like in the hallway, the entire hallway wall is that drawing. Like he he just jacked. I mean, my drawings are only what eight, uh, 11 by 17 or 14 by 17. This thing was like. Six feet wide, three feet tall. It's the entire wall of his his upstairs. Wow. And I'm like, Billy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's really weird, man. 
you, can you even do that? I never thought about that. You're the subject, but it's not your artwork. It's really strange. Producing it, he's not selling it. I, what do I care? I, I just, I would be stoked if he, he was like, I mean, I think it was, if you go on my website, um, uh, the, the end or the beginning, the first thing you see on my website is Anderson Silva talking to the host. I think it's like, what is it? It was like one of the countdown shows, but it was the Portuguese one. It was in Portuguese. Okay. So he was telling the host, she's like, oh, is this a photo? He's like, no, this is a, this is a pencil drawing, you know? And I'm like, yo, tell everybody who it is. Like, give me some. <laughs> didn't, didn't get the love, but whatever. I mean, wow. I'm using the video. I jacked the video. He jacked my dart. Whatever. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That one came out around the MySpace days, didn't it? Like yeah. 2008, roughly, somewhere around there? Yes, somewhere in there. Like I said, things changed, man. Uh, I used to get these guys begging me, what do I have to do? What do I have to do to get this done? You know, What do I have to do to get a drawing from you? And it was always like, well, whatever. I, I'll just give these to you, and we're – we're good. Just retweet it, whatever. Now, man, these fighters are just so into their own shit that they just don't, they don't reciprocate anything, you know? Hey. And like, if very few guys are, because I'm saying like the last, what I did, Connor, I did uh, Khabib, I did Masvidal, I did the goats, and in the goats only uh, Demetrius Johnson retweeted it because DJ's awesome. Yeah, uh, Hospital, he's all over the internet, so he retweeted it. Adesanya, I did. He paid no attention. Doesn't care. He didn't. He didn't let anyone know. Khabib didn't. I'm not even sure he runs his Twitter. Uh, same with Connor. So yeah, I doubt it. It, it used is- to be. Go ahead. I'm He's, sorry. No, no. I, I just it just used to be easier because I give away times. If I have the opportunity to meet with the subject, whoever it was, I just gave them their drawings. Like I was, uh, it was DC. That's my uh, favorite one. <laughs> I was uh, like the Bellator had a signing here, and King Mo is a, a good friend of mine, so I. I met up with Mo. He was doing the signing with Ken Shamrock, Hoist Grace, Pete Ortiz, Randy Couture. I gave Ken his original already, but I gave Hoist the drawing helio that I did, which was actually pretty cool. It was, you know, first family of yeah. MM Kitsu, and I got to give Hoist a custom drawing of his dad then uh i gave randy his randy has two of them now huck has three of them tito has two of them and only has one only done one again so it's i like giving i don't care i like giving the originals away oh you gave the originals yeah i give it to the fighters you know, and if, if the fighters don't take them, then I'll try and sell them. They don't usually sell. <laughs> no one no one cares about the originals um, because there's so much more. But it's okay. That's crazy, man. I would think that would sell well. So uh, teach me, tell me a little bit about how you do your artwork. You you said you do it roughly on about an 8 by 11 or so. What, what was you, your, your dimensions? 14 by 17 it's like a or paper um if you can't see through it it's pretty like a lot of guys are like hey can you send me the original i'm like no i can't because you can't really you can't roll these things up the prints i make are are poster paper but the originals are a, a, a hard bristol paper you know a smooth bristol paper wow and you're using a, a lead pen or pencil what do you do just pencil. You want to see something funny? I'll show you. Absolutely. I will show you my 
Okay. See that? <laughs> these are that whole pile right there. These are all drawings. Oh wow. Damn. Yep. That's about three hundred. Just sitting there on top of my DVD collection and next to the comics. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. You collect yeah. comics too? Of course. I wouldn't be an artist if I wasn't a complete nerd. There you go, man. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there's the paper. You can see you can't you can't really see through it. That's pretty thick. Cardstock type paper. Yeah. And every every time I do a drawing, someone's like, You're tracing. I'm like, All right. You can't see through this thing. Yeah, that's but, a okay. ignorant comment. <laughs> every, every single time I do something. It used to be worse. It used to be like, Oh, that's just Photoshop filter. So I'm like, really? Is it <laughs> It's not Photoshop filters, it's pencil. You don't get that finger. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you're a right handed artist, huh? <laughs> Look at my, can you see my wetsuit tan? Oh, yeah. You've been right. diving a lot? No, I give surfing lessons. Oh, okay, cool. Because art doesn't pay the bills at yeah. all. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, so. I'm out there battling with the stingrays trying to get little kids to surf and stay standing on a surfboard most days. That's cool though. Where, what you're in California doing that? Yeah. San Diego. San Diego. Yeah. So you're right by AKA, the AKA guys, huh? Well, no, they're in, they're in San Jose. Oh, that's which, right. San Jose. Yeah. They're, they're farther away, much farther. But I mean, like I said, I do uh social or Mike Quick, who owns AKA Thailand. So mm -hmm. I talk to him a hundred times a day and find out a lot of that ins and outs of what's going on over there. Yeah, that's really cool. I like Mike Swick a lot. Um, I think I've only had uh, John Fitch from AKA. I'm trying to get more guys from over there, but I've only had Fitch on the podcast. Fitch is funny. He's, yeah. <laughs> He's crazy, He's man. <laughs> He's he got he got a little weirder, didn't he? I have I haven't heard anything from like come out of his mouth for years, but I've seen some of his posts online and I'm like, hmm. Okay, like <laughs> you need but hey. <laughs> for sure, man. Are you able to finish a piece all of, like in one sitting or do you have to come back to it and make sessions? No, nah, dude, these take me like forty hours. Wow. Yeah. So about a month damn that's crazy be uh way less because if i just did like a face i it's just it's just taken it they just take a long time now they yeah. i put in them do you listen to music while you're you're doing your artwork or you watch tv what do you do i i i'm such a movie fanatic it's ridiculous i yeah. love i love I've always loved movies, but this gives me like more of a reason to, to watch movies. Yeah, for sure. What are you what are you watching on Netflix these days or Hulu, whatever? Um, well me and my girl just she hasn't seen Thirteen Reasons Why and I know they just came out with season four. So I'm watching I'm re watching the first seasons till we get to the fourth. I wa I just finished watching All American which is whatever. It's, it's, it is what it is. That's just a DW show, you know? Yeah. So it's just shitty acting and <laughs> <laughs> the same thing huh. over. I don't know the first one you referenced. 13, 13 what? Reasons why? 13 reasons why. Well, like suicide and. Okay. Basically every, every negative bullying. It's awesome though. It's, it, it's been out for a few years. But now they just got to be fourth season and, and final. So I'll let you know how that is once I'm done with it. But yeah. uh, I did, I watched Tiger King in about two days. Yeah, we did too. <laughs> I'll ask him. You have any plans on drawing um, the Tiger King guy? I can't think of his damn name. 
Joe, uh, Joe, Joe Jack. Jack. <laughs> uh, maybe if he gets out of prison. <laughs> yeah. I heard Nicolas Cage might be playing him in a movie. That sounds pretty entertaining. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could see him doing that. Yeah. That's Cage role, right? Mm hmm. That's such a freaking crazy ass show, dude. The guy's got two husbands who aren't gay. Just like meth. <laughs> like, answer, answer me. How do you have two husbands that aren't gay? Yeah. Supposedly yep. they never technically got married either. That was all for the show. They were never really legally married, which I'm sure you can't legally marry two men in this, anyway. I don't know. They're all, I don't know how that works. Show and everybody's got like multiple chicks. I'm like, dude, I got to get into this, the Tiger King business. Like these <laughs> guys are all swingers you know yeah <laughs> so what, what else do i what else have i watched oh my son's got me watching uh attack on titan you heard of that uh -uh. like anime that's one thing i never got into is anime i hate anime i, I absolutely it. he's like it's so dope you have to watch it and i'm like ah whatever like if he's telling me I need to watch it and we can spend time together, then that's what I'll do. I'll watch Attack on Titan. It's been pretty good, but I don't know. I mean, I don't like that anime. Like, that's impossible! You know, like that. Yeah, everything just blowing up all around them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, like, it's, it's not for me either, man. I don't, the younger kids love that crap, though. Yeah, they do. I don't know. I don't know why, but that's... I mean, um, but I'm a, then again, I'm a product of the Thundercats and He-Man and G.I. Joe, because I'm old. That's what I'm talking about. That's all my favorites, too. <laughs> How old are you, though? You, uh, you left out Ninja Turtles, and then we're good to go. <laughs> I <laughs> Turtles, man. I'm, um, I'm, I just turned 36. Okay, so you're, luckily, you're still, you're still young. I that's hey, old what's that i didn't hear your age 46 46 okay, 10 years on me so yeah, you... 36 again yeah i i feel that way about 26 <laughs> it's just an <laughs> ongoing problem <laughs> yeah um i saw your boy just graduated on a uh, social media till you posted that is he your only kid? Do you have any other kids? Uh, just one one boy, 18 years old. Wow, that's cool. Is he have the... Sorry, what were you saying? I interrupted you. No, that's all right. I was just saying, spitting image of me. He does the same. I, he graduated from the same high school I graduated from. He's going to San Diego State University, where I graduated from. I was on the high school surf team. He was on the high school surf team. We do everything together except play the video games that he's playing right now, which uh, with League of Legends. Uh, it's just, just like shit over and over, really, every time I walk in his room. So, does he have the, uh, the art artistic flair too? Does not like it at all. Oh, really? Uh, that sucks. Going into business. Okay. Well, does he at least appreciate his dad's art? Because incredible um no i mean he gives me a hard time because like a lot of people hit him up online and then here they're like oh your dad does that you know and he's like yeah it's really annoying that people like it. and i'm kind of a local in this area so he's like like every time we go out you know these people like you know what if you got out of the house maybe you'd be in the same position but he is in front of that computer Playing video games all day. Yeah. Um, Eli Knight, the jiu-jitsu uh, black belt, he was on the other day, and we were talking about um, the kids nowadays with all that stuff. How they're basically cyborgs, man. They're just half technology. Mine are the same way. This is horrible. It's crazy. It's, they're just attached, mm -hmm. you know. My girls give, gives me shit, like, oh, you're always on your phone. I'm like, yeah, but it's like business related. Like I work off of my phone. I do social media off of my phone. Right. I, I, 
you know, set things up and get meetings and get things done with my phone. It's not like I'm sitting there playing games. But this, these kids, like my kid, just it's like if he's not on the computer playing his his game, he's on his phone playing his game. Yeah. Like kick back and relax. Like shh. look at the wall, count sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I, my, my kids are uh, horrible when they're in the vehicle. We're in the vehicle for less than five minutes, and they're already asking for stuff. Can we watch a movie? Can we can I have my iPad? Can I have a phone? Can I do this? Like, just look out your window and think about things. That's what we did when we were kids. Just use your imagination. We do. We we went to sleep in the car when mm-hmm. we were in the car. That's yeah. what we do. We tell our kids it's time traveling. Just time travel. Go to sleep. We'll wake up. You'll wake up, and we're already there. Yeah. No, no, I gotta sit there and be like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> people try to do my iPhone with my thumbs. Yeah. Dude, I cannot do that. Like, I'm a, I peck. Yeah. Peck, 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 peck. <laughs> Go like this. Like, every time I press something, the whole screen goes like that. Mm-hmm. I have the same problem. As soon as you take the electronics away from kids, too, that, well, mine especially, they, uh, they're instantly hungry. They're, then they start needing things. <laughs> they're like, oh, I'm back to being a human again. Oh, here's my list of things I need to complain about. Right. Oh, weird. Yeah. My stepson's uh, going to be 13 this summer, and he's, he's hardcore into games and electronics. It's like yeah, I always tease him because he walks around with a charger in his pocket. I'm like, dude, it's not that serious. <laughs> That's so bad. And so it's What's that? Whenever I talk, it cuts you off for some reason. The audio is messed up on here. Committed to the cause. Yeah, definitely. And um, whenever I, I tell him, all right, it's time to be done. Take a break from it. Are you done for the rest of the day? He'll run to the bathroom like he has to go to the bathroom and just, just realize it. I'm like, dude, you're killing your bladder. What are you doing? It's so disconnected. Yeah. They're all getting yeah. brainwashed. It's rough. It's so – it's rough now just trying to get the kids – just get to do things. And at the same time, we're in this stupid lockdown bullshit mm-hmm. where they can't do anything anyway. Mm, I know. Yeah, it's just starting to open up a little bit more out here. We're uh, we're north of Denver, Colorado. Um, you're, California, I heard, is pretty strict still, huh? You guys are... I mean, I, much? at the beach, and there is no social distancing going on on the beach. But for some reason, if I go into Vaughn's, I got to get like a body cavity search and drop my pants and give cortis. <laughs> like, but on the beach, no one cares. Yeah. Or if you're protesting or rioting or that stuff too, it's a free game. Interesting how rioting and protesting cured coronavirus too. Yeah. Yeah, I've been saying they're, they're either going to have to wipe out a ton of people to prove their case or they're gonna have to just admit that it's all crap man yeah i mean look at it let's just look at look at the numbers i mean yesterday new york was the lowest it's been in like three months or something like that and new york see was like the epicenter of where most of the cases were and that's totally down but then you check on like coronavirus news and they're like spiking like really are you sure yeah so I think it's just at this point it's just horseshit. Like everybody, like, honestly, this whole George Floyd thing and the Black Lives Matter and all that. I'm not sure this would have happened if people weren't confined to their homes for two months. Because now they're just like, all right, I'm done. You know, yeah. Black Lives Matter, and I'm gonna go out and show how much I'm behind this cause. I can't sit in my house anymore yeah and everybody has cabin fever yeah and restless I, I, I didn't know that this was going to be it but i said something i'm like people are going to start pushing back at some point because they're going to get because because just what we've had to go through is just i'm pretty sure I, i'm not going to talk about politics what they should have done and whatever but I think like a, a month quarantine would have been fine. I, I would have actually made it stricter. Like you can't go out unless just for food or medical or whatever. And, and then open everything back up because. Yeah. 
and and also target your audience, the, the sick people, the ones with respiratory issues. Like, focus on them. Don't focus on me. Hang on. Hang on one second, Evan. Um, it's skipping on you for a second. Let me make sure it's my sig my signal is good. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it started skipping, but it was cutting out all your words. Damn it. Say, say something again, a sentence. I am a <laughs> hamburger. All right, go for it again. Let's see if we can do this again. Say what I was saying. Yeah, I want to hear what you're saying. It was cutting you out. What I was saying was, Mike, you know, he uh, real quick with Mike's podcast. During quarantine, quarantines, now, quarantines had like Ampage and Rich Franklin and Forrest Griffin, Pat Sarah, a, a lot of prominent former champions from the UFC. And I say the quarantine series about 13 guys, 12 guys, something like that. Of the 12 guys, probably eight of them said, I'm pretty sure I had coronavirus in October, November, December. Like, just with sickness for a week, got over it. And that's the, that's the end of the story. I wish there was more, but it was like, kills who it kills people that a, a bad flu pneumonia would probably really you know, in way. so I don't know about like the states that you're in like in Colorado and but here in California just I think it's not trying to just trying to rules it up or just garbage for everybody so, well, I don't know anything. I'm just an artist, sort of coach. But um, what I what I've seen, that crap. Oh, they the whole thing. You can see that uh, by them being like, "All right, you know what? There's some riots going on, so we should probably just open everything up." Um, and wipe our hands with that and move on. Yeah. Yeah, Pat Militich said um, he thinks he got it in, um, I think it was in November, December. And he had it early on this year, too, before it was like a, a well-known thing in, in the States. And he had a rough week or so, just a bad case of the flu, basically. And then it was done because you're healthy guys that are taking care of themselves. It's just another flu, basically. I think it was blown out of proportion. And I think they pinned corona on every kind of death imaginable, too, just to keep the numbers up. Yeah, because you should hear my mother, my East Coast Jewish mother. Don't go in the ocean, Evan. <laughs> Coronavirus. I read an article that it jumps from here to that. <laughs> the lowest fathomable variable of uh, <laughs> would be getting coronavirus in the ocean. Like, but people believe, most people believe a lot of what they read or what they see, and so... Where we are, you should get Pat for your show if you haven't had him on, by the way. Yeah, I haven't had him on this podcast, but I uh, co-host another podcast called Truth or Theory, where we do alternative news and conspiracy theories, and uh, we've had him on there. It cut out on you. What would you say? I'm sorry, Evan. I'm sorry. I cut you off, but I'm saying Pat must have loved that because he's, he's a, a constitutionalist and a conspiracy theorist, so he... I'm assuming he absolutely loved that show. Yeah, I, I love having him on. He's a um, he's a great brain a brain to pick at, man. He he knows a lot of stuff and he's got a lot of in interesting information. Him and his co-host Jeffrey Wilson, who I've become friends with as well, he'll be on this podcast shortly, and we're doing a swap cast with those guys uh, next month, I believe. Awesome, yeah, Pat. Oh, he's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I love them. I love all those guys from that era, man. They're a treasure to me. <laughs> I, wish, 
I wish they would get more more money for what they did. Culver would get in the UFC Hall of Fame. Yeah, I know. They need to do that. Uh, Pat has a new podcast with um, Ron, Rob, uh, Ron Kirk, or what, I think that's his name. I can't remember the announcer guy. He's a Crook? Crook, yeah. Crook, or I, I can't say it. But the final oh. round, I believe that's what it's called. They had Jens on there in a two-part series recently. I, I learned a lot about Jens I didn't know about. He had a crazy upbringing. You never saw Driven? No, I need to check that out. Yeah, yeah. You, you come out of that like, damn, you know, like I, he's, I think something in the one of the lines is said it was like, I still remember the taste of the the gun that my father pointed put in my mouth, like like heavy shit. Yeah, yeah. His his relationship with his dad was not insane. That's. The fact that he came out of that as good as he did is incredible. Yeah, Jens is dope. He's awesome. He can talk a lot. <laughs> yeah. He's got some crazy stories, too, just outside of childhood. His travel yeah. stories are hilarious with his fear of flying and everything, too. Uh, so funny. I, I got <laughs> playing Fortnite with him like a year ago. Um, I texted Jens because he's like, I'm going on right now. I'm like, all right, my son's going to join you. He doesn't care about fighting. He doesn't, whatever. But he knows that there's this guy who's pretty popular who's playing Fortnite. So he's like, yeah, yeah, hook me up with him. I'm like, my son is playing Fortnite with Jen Fowler. I'm like, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, he's a big gamer. He's got his own Twitch channel, I believe, too, or whatever those things are called. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could do that, make money off of that. That would be awesome. Yeah, I think Matt Sarah is getting into that now too, uh, which he's a big gamer as well. Yeah, he plays. Um, fuck, what's the name of that game? Call of uh, Duty. Say that? Again. No, no, no. It's not Call of Duty. It's um, it's similar to Fortnite, where they fly you over an area and the, the thing closes in on you, but you don't build. Yeah. You PUBG. What? PUBG. I don't know. What is the long version of that? I don't know. <laughs> We're two dads that aren't cool enough to know these things. <laughs> yeah, I I actually texted him like, what the hell did you say? It was like some sort of battle royal. Um, fuck. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I can't think of it either. It's oh, on my phone. It's on my phone, but I'm talking into my phone, so I can't check. Yeah, all the nerds listening, are, their heads are exploding. It, dude, oh God, I should send you the podcast that he did. Um, I know they're looking at me like, come on, old guy, fucking get the end. <laughs> oh, I'm still playing 2K16. <laughs> I know he goes by the uh, the game handler or game tag, whatever the hell you call it, uh, Kamora Savage or something like that. That's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> listening to describe it <laughs> so <laughs> like i'm standing there in this vr right fucking guys coming from every direction and i'm sitting there with my fucking gun right and, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. that, strong, <laughs> that strong island accent <laughs> so funny but he's such a good dude like He's one of those guys you could just walk up to and be like, "Hey, I'm a big fan of yours," and he'll he'll engage you in a conversation. You know, he's not again that older, the older generation of fighter. They're so much more accommodating, yeah, and welcoming than this this newer entitled. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Entitled. It's the new, the new version of the MMA athletes. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> It's tough, and I mean, think of this. Think of how many people at every UFC card. I mean, God, tell me how many people you knew say they were, what, 12, 12 fights on that UFC card this past weekend? Jessica I and uh, Cynthia Calvi headline? Yeah, I couldn't think of her last name. How many people did you know on the card outside of the main event? Maybe two, and I follow the stuff regularly. Right. Marvin Vittori, um, 
Andre Feely. Oh, uh, yeah. Charles De La Rosa. After that, it's like, uh, don't fuck. <laughs> and and they're and they have that entitlement thing that like well I'm in the UFC and I don't it's strange man it's a, it's a weird time in MMA hoping things change but you know they they're striving to be the next NFL at next NBA I mean those guys they don't answer fans you know right. that's why I think you and I we're spoiled because we came up in the sport during a time where fighters actually like dude, they were on the ultimate fighter and then that night they'd go on to the sure dog forums and answer questions they're not doing it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i missed that era man it sucks that's going it was, it was such a great era of mma did you i was i loved the ultimate fighter did you like the ultimate fighter i did the first eight seasons or so uh and then it started to get old are getting tedious yeah i'd still watch it though i still enjoy that stuff as long as they had like a, a good set of coaches on there that made sense and, yeah. and get a, a good weight class i sounds terrible but i couldn't get into it too much when the uh, they had women weight classes i just started to become a women's mma fan the last like couple years last few years um i was late for the boat for that but i still watched it but uh man they're getting so damn good now though joanna um Valentina, Amanda, all these girls are freaking assassins now. They're so technical. Yeah. I mean, th there was a time where there was just a handful of <laughs> – I remember I had uh, Dana White on Tap Out Radio when I was hosting, and, and I asked him about female MMA because, like, Gina Carano was kind of a big deal at the time. Mm-hmm. And then there were names like Shayna Baszler, Tara LaRosa, Roxy. Um, uh, <laughs> there, was, there wasn't too many, but white knights were really campaigning for it. And I remember I had him on the show, and I was like, what, are we going to see women in, in, in the UFC? And everybody's like, Dana said never. Dana said never. No, bullshit. He was on my show. He's like, not now. He's like, how many popular, how many girls can you name? You know, and I'm like five to ten, you know, Cyborg, Julie Kedzie, you know, mm -hmm. names that I, Rhonda wasn't really a thing yet. And some guy got so mad at me on the, on the UG, the Evan Showman, the he titled the thread, Evan Showman is a fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, God. Dude, what are you talking about? Like, and he was mad because I did Dana White. That's what I'm going to do. Because that works out for people really well. Um, and he was mad at me that he put him for a women's division. As in, showmanart.com was going to be the one to change his mind. Um, it just wasn't the right time, you know? And Rhonda came along and it became the right time because. As much as people don't like her, Ronda was up. Ronda was a badass. Yeah, definitely. A lot of people hate her. Speaking of, let's see. This is another one that blew my mind. I don't have the whole image here. But, man, that detail you do on these belts and stuff, man, that is incredible. The glare on the gloves. Can't see her because my uh, image, I guess, isn't saved at the right size. But Glare. Uh, it's so badass looking. I'm gonna put a, a slideshow together of um of some of your um your artwork at the beginning of the episode. Yeah. And links to your uh, showmanart.com so people can see this stuff that haven't seen it. It's this guy's an incredible artist. Go support him. I'm gonna buy a print for sure, probably of uh, DC. Up more notoriety. <laughs> it used to be great, yeah. but. And as it as it dropped off, like yeah, everything died, man. I I'm not I can't say it enough that when Reebok came along, everything everything changed. Yeah, every everything died. That tap out 
died. Um, yeah, that's a sad, a sad subject too. Because tap out was so awesome. I wanted to ask you too. Uh, the tap out radio. I'm not familiar with that. That was a uh, part of their brand that you were doing a radio show for. Yeah, um, Steffi Daniels, who is a staff writer for Bloody Elbow now. Ryan Loco, my best friend. Um, he got his whole start in MMA through me, and now he's like the guy photographer in, in MMA. Um, he's verified, and I'm not, so fuck him. Um, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the three of us hosted Cage Side Live, and then I approached uh, Punk Ass one day and was like, you know, how do you feel about like Tap Out Radio? Because Tap Out was blowing up. Um, and they were crossing over, you know, they were, they had the television show and they were doing a lot of media stuff, like crossover stuff at that point. This is before Charles passed away and he was super into it. He was super into it. And we were like, yeah, you know, we were able to get people on the show that were tap out people that people might not have known, you know, it was a good give and take. We won radio show of the year. The UG, right, um, voted us radio show of the year. Two years in a row. It's over MMA Junkie um, and whatever radio shows there were at that time because there were a lot. Yeah. Um, so we were, we, were, we were huge. And then it just, Charles died. Uh, Art Kreiner stole a bunch of money from the company. And that about, about fizzled out. <laughs> fizzle out. Um, and that was it, man. Like that company died like a fast death. And, you know, now what tap outs in, it was sold to that guy, Jamie Salter, who is known for like taking companies, putting them in Walmart, extracting all the money that he possibly can, then, then selling it, um, sold it to the WWE that's their workout gear now or something, but it's not tap out. I mean, it says tap out. Right. But it's, I've seen that. Yeah. It's, it's not tap out. So the company is literally no more. It was the biggest company in MMA and it gone. Yeah. It's crazy, man. It was so, so big in the um, mid two thousands. I had a uh, Dan Caldwell punk ass on recently on my other podcasts. And I wish it was on this one this, before I kicked this one off because it was not conspiracy related at all. I just wanted to talk to him because I'm a fan. <laughs> and uh, it's one of my favorite episodes, man. He's such a cool guy. He, he's an awesome guy. He is. Uh, Tremendous guy. <laughs> he's, everyone's talking about him. <laughs> he's uh, the best guy. He does it all. He's the best guy. Grand tap out. Everybody likes him. Uh, <laughs> I've had so many funny stories with Dan, dude. He's, <laughs> he's so, dude's awesome. Um, but as soon as they sold tap out, he was gone. Yeah. He was out of MMA and scrape too. He made like, he was always in a car. So he wound up making like custom things for cars. I, I don't know shit about cars. I don't know the same one. Either. 15 years. <laughs> um, but yeah, that company died and they bounced. I mean, before they, I have videos up on, on my YouTube of uh, what UFC was it that BJ Penn fought Diego Sanchez? Like, that was like the 160s, I think. I, I don't know. It was one of those, right? Yeah. And Charles had just passed away. They were doing huge numbers at that time because his death brought in so much, so many eyes, and they were just moving so much product. And, and the tap out, I can't remember, the headquarters somewhere north of here and like the Inland Empire and like LA ish area. Right. And had a theater that they called the, the I think it was the Mask Theater. Up, but I was there with Ryan we, and Steven Quadros 
Kendall Grove, Jens, Anthony Johnson. Uh, I think Kendo was there, but he left early. Um, just our own private viewing of like a hundred people watching the UFC on a movie screen. Like it was so dope. And it was, again, gone. <laughs> like, weeks after because everything just went it, it just disappeared super fast yeah uh, but god that was such good times back then it was yeah, cool that's the best era in my opinion man it was actually ufc 107 i just looked it up i was way off <laughs> whatever yeah. i don't even know what number they're on now it's just I I for the fight but um yeah, you know, Stephen Quadros, uh, aside from being the announcer for Pride, he also has, like, a cream cover band. He's he's the drummer, and there was a drum kit there, and he just killed it on the drums. And and then he turned, he asked, uh, <laughs> we're all standing there watching, cheering him on and all that, and then Stephen just assumes you don't know anybody, okay? So he, he, he's like, so this one time I was trying out, you know, and, and whatever. Peter Chris went down. I was trying out for, for uh, Kiss, you know, and Gene Simmons comes up to me. He's like, you guys know who Gene Simmons is? Like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> like a room full of guys in there at the time, their mid-30s. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody knows who Gene That's Steven. Uh, that's funny. It's a funny character. Another great dude. Man, I honestly haven't met a lot of bad people in this sport. Yeah. There have been a couple. Believe you me. Go ahead and call them out, man. <laughs> see, who was the – Matt Hughes was a huge dick. I could see that. Uh, for many reasons. Just such an asshole. Um, Josh Koscheck, what a dick he was too. Koscheck, yeah. My wife always hated Koscheck. I don't know why, but I've always I've always been entertained by him. But my wife can't stand him for some reason. He was such a dick. And again, this is Swick's teammate, and they, they yeah. all have. But when I met him, he oh my god, what a jerk. <laughs> um, honestly, those are really the only two people that I could say I was like really put off with you know like everybody's always just super cool and gracious and you know yeah my only bad experiences were probably tim sylvia because i used to live in the quad city area where he's where he was based out of with the military fighting system yeah a lot of my fr uh, friends would bump into him they all had bad stories too <laughs> really yeah but he seemed like i don't know he seems like a, a cool guy if you're in his circle if you know him but if you come off as just a casual fan or something like that. He's kind of an arrogant prick with it back in the day. Well, the irony of the whole thing is when I met Matt Hughes, it was when I was talking to Tim Sylvia. Um, and to, it was the night Tim Sylvia beat Andre Arlovsky at the Anaheim Pond. I think he – and the only two build, people in the building that were cheering were me and Ryan Loco. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> Um, just so all over Arlovsky at that time. And at, I can't remember. I think it was Tito's after party. No, we cracked Tito's after party. <laughs> that sounds like a good story. <laughs> uh, Tito fought Forrest Griffin that night, so he wasn't there yet. And in our circle was Nate Corey and Eddie Sanchez who were in the UFC, and Josh Haynes, who were in the UFC at the time. Josh Haynes had fought Bisping in the finale. Mm -hmm. uh, top three? Four, top three. I think. I don't know. Rich, yeah, you're right. Two was Rich Franklin and Matt Hughes. Um, yeah. Three, Rock and Tito. And Tito wasn't there yet for his after party, and 
we had Nate with us, and Eddie Sanchez, I think, was either making his debut against Crow Cop or he had made his debut. So, like, people were such fanboys back then that they're just like, hey, come on in, you know, and uh, fucking Eddie drinking Tito champagne for his victory. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> so funny, dude. But, and, yeah, I, I met tim sylvia in the front and i was like man i'm i'm super stoked for you i he i had given him his drawing as well um and he was he was he was totally cool he was insane about his belt though like yeah oh yeah <laughs> like you ever watch those jerry springer shows where someone's obese and they've like morphed into their couch you know like the couch like winds up sticking to their body yeah sylvia with his belt yeah i I heard a lot of stories about him with that belt in clubs and bars and shit wasn't it wasn't all walked up with his belt on like it was a regular belt <laughs> yeah i can't hate on him for that though because man if i if i was able to pull off a ufc victory to get a championship belt i'd probably wear that shit everywhere too <laughs> that's that's an incredible accomplishment oh yeah do you do you remember the fight between him and frank Mir? Oh, God, yeah. It's one of my favorites. He broke his arm, and he kept will, going. He didn't even want to stop. The ref stopped him. I think it was Herb Dean at the time, too. It was Herb, and because of that, I mean, I love Herb. guy, But because of that, I mean, one of the – Herb is – No one – No one saw that. Except for Herb Dean. And they're booing his ass out of the building. And then they show the replay. And you see Tim Sylvia's arm go pop, pop, right here. Mm -hmm. Like Herb Dean is the greatest referee I've ever seen. Yeah, he is really good, man. Really good. Uh, I had Chris Lee been on as my first guest for this podcast. And he said he went through Herb Dean's uh, referee schooling academy, I guess what you call it. He he chose him because he's, he's the best too. I was like, man, that's a good that's a good route to go. <laughs> that's something I've always fantasized about doing too is becoming an MMA referee. But I got young kids and my wife would kill me traveling that much. <laughs> I <Some> of <laughs> think I don't want to be the, like the most hated man on earth just because you see something someone else doesn't. Yeah. Uh, but they, there's there's very it's hard to be a good ref, man. But like. There's a few, like, obviously, Big John, Herb, Jason Herzog is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I might be biased because he's a friend of mine, but he's so good. Like, yeah, I agree. He, the way he the way he refs is, like, no one else refs like that. Like, he's in the middle of the fight. He's moving with the fighters and looking at paces and looking at, at – when Michael Chandler was – Herzog saw that and was like, you don't know where you are. This fight is over. And really good. You, uh, you're breaking up on me again, man. Every time you get into a, a good rhythm, it starts to crack on you. <laughs> it's I'm not, I, great. I got a great vision here with you, but yeah. – um, I don't even know what I was saying other than Jason. Jason's just awesome. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of referees that should not, should not be. Yeah. Um, what's the guy? Steve Mazzagatti. Man, he used to get in a lot of shit. <laughs> he was, yeah, but he wasn't that bad. Yeah. There was a couple of times he did some really shitty calls, though, where he was like, where, where are you, dude? Where are you at? <laughs> Yeah, a lot of guys do, but I mean, I guarantee it wasn't bad as John Shorley, who yeah. was ref Olaf Alfonso versus Rob McCullough when Rob knocked Olaf's mouthpiece across the cage, and Shorley was like, oh, fuck, I got to go get that, instead of stopping Rob from killing him. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's bad. Morio Yakazami, too, had a couple of bad ones, but like you said, man, that's... Those guys, you got a crosshairs on you constantly. You can't, you can only do so good and you don't get that much credit. You do one thing bad and then your whole life is, your whole career is tarnished. It's like, 
there's no there's no room for error for those guys. But again, that's their job. Yeah, like and it's there's a lot on the line as well too, health and a career, stats, all that good shit. Why yeah, I mean, people's lives <laughs> are on the line, like, and yeah. it's a lot of people get messed up because they are just so incompetent and there's a lot of them there's a lot of them at a very high level uh yeah. in fact like beltran's real good too beltran yeah he's yeah. good i was trying to think of his name a minute ago got an amazing mustache dude mustache of champions <laughs> this is the best i can grow facial hair man this is like six years of growth <laughs> Yeah, well, you're lucky because I could probably grow a full beard by by Friday. Yeah, I would love to have that. That's awesome. Uh, I always got a sh- Now yeah. I'm old, white. I don't look like it, but I have a lot of, not a lot, but I have Norwe- Norwegian in me and uh, Native American. So I blame it on the Native American side. My Choctaw blood makes me not be able to grow good facial hair. Yeah, Norwegian too, you know. Yeah. Very sparse. Yeah. <laughs> Dirty Viking. <laughs> right. You watch Vikings? No, I need to. A lot of people talk highly about it. I haven't seen it. Dude. Yeah, Worth start it? To... It's on Amazon Prime. Okay. I'll check it out. I just uh, got caught up on the Ozarks. Uh, my wife and I caught up on that one. We're always behind. A couple years behind on everything. That's a big hit series. But that show's pretty good too. It's really dark and, uh, yeah. and twisted, but uh, I, I enjoy it. That's kind of a um, Breaking Bad kind of a vibe to it. Yeah, I think Breaking Bad would have been if I had not binged the whole thing. I think I would have liked it a lot more. Like if I had six months in between, like crazy shit happening. Um, but just binging it, it's like oh well, solved in five seconds. You know, like. You binge watched it? Yeah. I did too. <laughs> I think I was probably five years behind on Breaking Bad. And same with The Sopranos, which is one of my favorite shows. I watched that probably six years after it ended. <laughs> Great show. I mean, yeah, it's, it's awesome. The only big show that I actually watched that is uh, that had a big following, I actually watched it live, was Dexter. I watched that one. And uh, that one should have ended after season four. I think four, yeah. The, what was it? Was it the end of season five or end of season six? With Trinity Killer, that ending was... Four. Yeah. It was it was crazy, and it was really good. And then the season five where it picked up after with yeah. Julia Stiles on there and everything, it, was, it just it went downhill. I wish they would have ended it with four or bring well, it back and try to redo a better season. Lumen, right? A yeah, better name? Lumen. <laughs> who's named lumen yeah it was very weak the whole season's wrapped around her and then they split off at the end too it's like well, she was a waste of time and i heard they're gonna bring back another season or, or start another season of dexter oh i know oh that'd be awesome i would love that to make up the finale <laughs> yeah pick up pick up where i left off in the um being a timber lumberjack guy and start killing people out there. <laughs> in- but, but I mean, how could you, how could you pick that up being a blood spatter uh, professional when you're suddenly a, uh, you're a, a woodsman. Just a woodsman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but crime scenes like, hey, yeah. he, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What do I know? I don't know shit. So my walks, son. He walks by with a bag of mulch while there's a crime scene. I can tell you what happened here. <laughs> what? Season 20. <laughs> yeah. Someone was definitely, definitely sodomized here. Well, the season that he had uh, Tom Hanks' son on, Colin Hanks, man, that one started to get really ridiculous with, he was becoming a superhero. He wasn't, he was no longer a, a vigilante crime guy or whatever the hell Dexter was but he would get a body off of a roof 
that's surrounded by police or some crap and then show up at another place like, it's like how are you pulling the stuff off it's it got so far-fetched it was ridiculous you know what want to know what the best television show is what's that sherlock i've never seen that one either i hate sherlock holmes what do you I, do to you? I hate most british shows <laughs> I'm like a total dick, but I'm <laughs> super boring and just, you know, pompous and, you know. Yeah. But Sherlock is Benedict Cumberbatch. You know, Benedict Cumberbatch. He's a great actor. And then Watson is Mark. Bilbo Baggins, or Frodo, oh, Bilbo. Bilbo, yeah, he's a good actor too. They're they're, dude, watch that show immediately. The thing is, the episodes are an hour and a half long. Oh wow, yeah. which one? Which one first? Vikings or uh, Sherlock? Uh, well, you want gratuitous violence? Always. Vikings is the way to go. <laughs> you want? You can think about and really get into Sherlock. I mean, Vikings is so like the main character is just, I mean, I don't have that many man crushes, but this motherfucker, you get it. <laughs> you get it. I like that. You said you don't like British TV shows typically and you, why you're wearing a Captain America shield shirt. <laughs> I like Marvel. There you go. I do too, man. Um, the only thing I like about DC is Batman, the Batman world. I'm a huge Batman fan, huge Joker fan, but everything else in DC, I'm not a fan of. But overall, Marvel's better. You know, what about uh, what do you think of Pattinson being Batman? Uh, man, I, I'm not going to hate on it yet because I'm the, I'll be the first one to tell you when they casted Heath Ledger as Joker, I was super disappointed and I did not see that character being a young guy like that. And I did not have much confidence at all. And like within four minutes of that movie, I was like, holy shit, was I wrong? This is awesome. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give him a chance, man. I think he could pull it off. I I think something somewhere I thought I read that Robert Pattinson was like, oh, I can't believe I did Twilight. It's the stupidest shit ever. Um, well, my son and I just watched him in The Lighthouse, I think it's called. I heard, <clears throat> I heard of that one. Black white film and it's only him and Willem Dafoe and it's weird as shit uh, but I mean you take Twilight out of the mix and he's pretty solid you know it's that he's Edward you look at him and he's Edward from Twilight mm -hmm. so and for people like us that are super nerds that are like oh this is Batman and Batman can't suck except for when Val Kilmer plays him or Clooney more George Clooney. Um, he, I mean, come on. When I heard Ben Affleck was going to be Batman, I'm like, really? Ben Affleck? Yeah. That was he was funny. He was fine. But it's Ben Affleck. Yeah. It's too much Too much with it. Too much baggage with that for him to play that role. Forces of nature. He was dated Gwyneth Paltrow. It's like, I, I like my hero anti-hero to be like uh john bernthal yes yeah. the pun punisher on netflix yeah that was great that prison fight scene uh, he, that was one of the coolest scenes fight scenes in, in movies not just in, in uh tv series hell yeah it was raw <laughs> but that's what i like to see like i mean he was awesome in the walking dead Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I just him and Ben Affleck are like you just can't even compare the two. Yeah, they need to do a, a John Berthal Punisher movie so he can get more credit for that role because he did such a good job with it. Not enough people saw that, I don't think. Well, look at look at who's played the Punisher, uh, Ray Stevenson. That was terrible. One of the worst movies I've ever seen. 
I right. couldn't even watch it after the trailer. I saw the trailer. I was like, I'm not giving that movie any money. <laughs> the, uh, Dominic, whatever his name is, Dominic West played Jigsaw, and it was just – Trainer. It was – And then Thomas Jane. That was a good movie, but he didn't really fit the character. But I enjoyed that movie. Dude, that guy's weird as shit. <laughs> One he is year. A weird <laughs> here in san diego comic-con was here you no know, the guy it was me uh my son who was like eight Josh Barnett, and ryan loco and they're like thomas jane like i don't know John barnett got some because barnett's a huge huge nerd uh, and josh had some book that he want that he wanted thomas jane to sign i guess like thomas jane had written a book like a, some comic that's why he was there signing whatever and like uh my son are gonna do the lego thing over here you know so loco and barnett go away and they come back 10 minutes later like Holy shit and I'm just like, what? And they just, they were like children trying to explain what it was like meeting Thomas Jane and him being just the most out to lunch, weirdest dude ever. Like he, he, what Josh said something like, yeah, I talked to Sean Patrick Flannery um, and he was going to some comic con in Canada or something. And Thomas Jane was like, what? Sean Patrick Flannery has a con? <laughs> Like, just, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, and I guess he was probably drunk for, and hadn't slept for like three days because I guess he was just nuts. Wow. That's <laughs> crazy. I didn't know he was that off the wall. That's funny. Yeah, Thomas Jane, yeah, he's, yeah, he's weird. I mean, look at him. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's jump into the six questions. I'm gonna cut you loose, man. I appreciate you giving me this much time. Do this. You ready? Sure. I switched out. Um, let's see. Number three, because I just I don't care for that question. The one that you sing along to is just a little too Pixar for me. So <laughs> we got an I got a surprise question for that one. All right. Number one is what movie can you watch over and over without getting tired of? Bachelor Party. Bachelor Party. Which one is that? You Tom Hanks. Homework. 1984? Best movie's ever made. Tom Hanks' best movie. Oh, really? Damn, I've never seen that one. I don't, oh, I, my. I don't remember it. It's so awesome. All right, I'm going to check that one out, too. Late night comedy movie, you know? Like, he's just such an asshole. Like, he's marrying Tawny Katane. Um... And her parents hate him, and they have a bachelor party, and he's trying not to cheat on her, and his friends are like, cheat on her because they're guys. <laughs> <laughs> I could watch that, and I could watch it over and over. I could watch Star Wars over and over. Empire. Empire's the best. Yeah, I agree. By four. All right, cool, man. Well, I got another movie to check out. I always appreciate that. I'm a movie freak as well. <laughs> number two what's the best practical joke that you played on someone or that was played on you um i used to work at a parking lot down the beach here in san diego and i just loved uh, i i was born in new york and i moved to san diego when i was 11 so i still have a very sarcastic side to me and i just love fucking with people that I care about. I like where this is going. <laughs> I'm just saying, I just love fucking with people that I care about. So, um, what, there's so many stories at the parking lot where we just had parking cones and we were like yelling at the valets across the street and the people were just laughing at them and they were like, shut the fuck up. And we didn't and it was terrible, but I'd say the, the biggest dick thing that I've ever done, I wouldn't even call it a practical joke, 
is my gym played horrible, horrible, horrible music. Just one of the owners love like classic rock and classic rock stocks. Like, come on. <laughs> it's, not, it's not classic. It's just shit from the 70s. So I got sick of it one day and managed to get into the back room where the music um, or the music station thing was. And they had like a piece of paper that showed all of the stations. And I was, I was sick of the fucking classic rock. And I was like, all right, fuck this. So I, I went in, put it on Hebrew hits, turned the ball all the way up. Locked the door from the inside, then closed it and fucking bounced. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm not going to do an impersonation. It'd be disrespectful, but I can imagine how awesome that was. <laughs> yes. Played throughout my gym without me there. And I was just, and I, and they couldn't get in the room to turn it off. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, number three is a new question. Is um, if you could time travel one time there and back, would you go into the future or the past, and which time period would you choose? Would I be able to have all the same things if I went back? Um, we'll say whatever you can carry. Would I be able to, if I went back to when I was seventeen? Could I be 17 or am I 36? No, you're going to be your age whenever time you jump into my time traveling machine. My quantum leap. That I blew it with back then that I would like to straighten that out. But ah, yes. Wait, what did you say? What did you blow at 17? Who did you blow? Girls, like just blowing it with girls. Just Oh, yeah. Going back and rectifying that and not looking like an asshole, um, that would be fine. But if it was me now, I guess, you know what? You know what I would do? I would go back in time and I would talk to my future, to my past self and tell them a few things. Like that were <laughs> ideas. <laughs> Give <him> an almanac. <laughs> Freaking sports almanac back from up to <laughs> What's what's one thing you would tell your your younger self that you can share? Fuck everything that you can. Why you can? Huh? <laughs> just do it. Just have sex with every single girl that you will let you, because one day you'll get married. He won't have sex with you ever. And then we'll force you 20 years later. <laughs> Get it out of your system, huh? Yes. Good advice. <laughs> Number four, what is something that really irritates you? Everything. I'm right there with you, man. I'm an irritable guy. <laughs> <laughs> just stupidity mainly, like just common sense, people that don't have it. That drives me nuts even my bowels are irritable man <laughs> sharing. Oh. sharing too much <laughs> <laughs> number five what is an item in your home that is special to you for sentimental sentimental reasons my son okay that's not a life an object <laughs> yes uh that stack of artwork would be something, I'm sure. It wouldn't be in a stack if I cared about it that much. Let's put it that way. That hurts. Here, I'll... <laughs> Let's say your house is going to be toasted. It's on fire. It's going to burn down. What's something you would grab besides your son? First off, this entire box of cards. Is that, is that um, sports cards? cards and and all that but the the main one where is it all right uh michael jordan magic johnson dual 
patch. Um, they're game worn jerseys. Oh, nice. MJ and LeBron game worn jerseys. I collected NFL football cords, but I um, I think I have a few basketball NBA stuff, but not much. I still have all my cards as well. My MJ rookie. Oh wow. I got an Anderson Silva autographed and did he autograph it or did he write thanks for the artwork? <laughs> uh, a pack. I, I do, or I've done a lot of stuff for tops, and they usually send me a bunch of cards after a project. Nice. So, I, I had recently done a Star Wars. I drew uh that's your artwork on a card yeah oh wow that's awesome so the original's in my closet and this is damn what came that, out of is that on your website too no it wasn't allowed oh, okay man that's incredible artwork yeah my uh my holy grail uh Prize card probably is my Joe Montana autograph card. I used to guard that like a a monster when I was a kid. Don't come near it. <laughs> Still have it. Yeah, and don't ever get rid of it. Yeah, it ain't worth crap these days, but I'm it's sentimental to me. So I thought I was gonna have a son and hand it down to him, but stepson's not interested in that stuff at all. So I'm just kind of collecting dust now. So yeah, I know. right there with. Yeah, it'll play a factor someday in life, I'm sure. Uh, let's see, number six, last question. What accomplishment are you most proud of? Having my son. Raising my son. Yeah, raising him. Seems like a good kid. Sounds like a good kid. Just needs to appreciate his dad's artwork a little bit more. Yeah, it's fine. He doesn't right, do <laughs> That's fine. He's still young, though. He'll come around. I didn't – my brain didn't develop and appreciate my dad – like I should have until it's probably in my early twenties. So next couple of years, he'll come around and he'll be your biggest fan. Um, he already is, but in a different, in a different way, just yeah. cause I've always, I still play ball with his friends. I still surf with him and his friends. I still do everything that young people do. Um, Big time. no dads my age are doing that shit. You know, they're all fat and yeah. <laughs> they're just fat, no motivation, mad at everything. So, yeah. Yeah, you stay in, in good shape, huh? Uh, I haven't worked out for a couple of months because of the quarantine. And the gyms are all closed. Yeah. You grew up surfing. You It's been like something you've done majority of your life? Yeah, since I was like 15. So. Oh, wow. 31 years. Wow, that's awesome. Times by Stingrays. How many times? Four. First time Four. I almost. Second time was painful, but I got in water. And two times were two weeks ago <laughs> on a Wednesday and then a Thursday, one right after the other. Damn. There is no worse pain that I felt in my life. I got a manhole lid cover dropped on my foot after the first stingray um, thing. Uh, two months later, they're like, man, you really got bad luck with your foot. I'm like, you know what? I'd rather have 20 of those manhole lid covers dropped on my dick than one, <laughs> than one stingray. I almost died. It was so brutal. Damn. So what exactly happens? Does the barb get stuck in you or is it just, do you have to remove the barb? You got to remove the barb. You got to put your foot in hot water. And my wife at the time, I just got divorced after 20 years. Um, 
but she thinks she's, she's a hairdresser, but she thinks she's an MD. So she's on the internet looking at all the stuff you're supposed to do. It's like, oh, you're supposed to put in as hot water as you can handle. So she boiled my foot. Ouch. At medical attention. And my foot got infected. Um, I go to the doctor. They're like, oh, this is the biggest needle that we have in the hospital. I'm like, sweet. Stick that in my ass. That was great. I got three shots. Uh, then they gave me this Cipracil shit that just melted my entire insides. Just wow. walking, shitting my whole body out. It was, I, it was so, I almost died. And the Stingray was the most painful thing I've ever felt. All that other stuff was after. Wow. What were the locations of the stings? On my feet. They're always on your feet. You're stepping on them? Damn, man, that's crazy. You cut out, what did you just say? They're bottom feeders, so yeah. they don't up. They just kind of float like... <sighs> Hover the, the base of the seafloor. Damn, man, that's nuts. Yeah, I'm not a, not a fan of them. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, we used to both be zookeepers, not Joe Exotic zookeepers, but like real zookeepers. And we used to compete on who would have the most gnarly animal scar and all this kind of shit. And uh, that one is a pretty good one, man. <laughs> Stingray. <laughs> Mine's uh, an eight foot alligator. Almost took this this finger off, and you can't see it, but um, that whole finger is a scar tissue, basically, and doesn't work that well. Uh, he got his whole back of his leg ripped open by a bison, a mother bison, and he had a, a crazy zaro scar across the whole back of his leg from his knee down to no, like, thigh down like, to the like yeah yeah watch <laughs> yeah that was when we were younger man i, I don't i don't uh, value those as much anymore but those stories are still fun man hell no just get that chick that got her whole arm taken off by the damn lion like, oh, can I Back to work tomorrow and they're like no you, you don't have a fucking arm no yeah she identifies as a man now i believe too or did at the time too and it was just i don't know but she's a man supposedly added to that story of yep. madness yeah <laughs> crazy times well man we i want to get you back on eventually we can talk all nautical things because you i'm sure you got a lot of cool stories with surfing all right i got I got more stories <laughs> got about fights and craziness and all kinds of good stuff. Way more, way more, more fun stuff than drawing. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a huge fan of your artwork. I have been for a long time. So I wanted to hear some of that and I just want to get some more exposure with you and get to know you better. But yeah, I want to get you back on. We'll talk about all the other crazy shit too. It's been fun, sure. man. Where can uh, my listeners find you and support you? I, I, I apologize for being on for so long. I'm long winded again. Are you good? Podcast, so I can just go. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. As a podcast host, it's nice for me. All right, man. For having me on. Uh, thank you for coming on. Where can my listeners find you and support you, man? Shomanart.com. My website. You can Google my name and Evan Showman and. You should be able to find me on Twitter and Facebook, uh, Instagram. I think I'm Showman Art, at Showman Art on Twitter. I'm at Showman Art, dot com on Instagram. I had to change it because Russians hacked me, fuckers. <laughs> right, at, right at the election, and all they're doing is talking about Russians, this, that, and the other, and the fucking Russians hacked me. How do I know? Because I had – suddenly my account was a Russian – email and i'm like really and i couldn't change it back so i lost wow. all my part over again oh that sucks what's your tiktok handle don't even bother <laughs> <laughs> like my son made me start it so i could like so he can use my account to like his stupid ass videos that he makes oh you and really do have an account i was messing with you yeah no my son made son. 
made it so I could like his videos. And all that happens is my girlfriend's 12 year old takes my phone and does a fucking TikTok dance bullshit on it. <laughs> Post videos. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, we got to talk more uh, Marvel too when you come back on, man. I, oh, for- there's a lot of stuff to talk about with her. All right, Evan, I appreciate you coming on, man. Have a good one. Thanks again. Peace yeah. out, brother. All right, man. Later.